carbon. Carbon is the smallest atom in the uh, periodic table of the uh, elements that is able to form a 3D structure. And we call this structure diamond. Diamond is made of carbon. And because it's the tiniest bond you can have, diamond has extraordinary properties. You already know that diamond is the hardest material. When we say diamonds are forever, it's because it's the hardest material, right? But it's also the most elastic material, which is counterintuitive. It's the best conductor of heat. Uh, it's also the material that has the highest voltage breakdown. And it's biocompatible. And behind every single feature uh, you have here, there is an application, a potential application. The issue is that diamond you dig from the ground do not qualify to address all these potential applications. This picture shows my grandfather, who was a mine prospector in, uh, in Africa. And this relates, of course, to, uh, to our company now. So when you dig diamond out of the, the ground, um, the diamond you get is not reproducible. Some have defects, some have contaminants, and so the products you made with those diamonds vary. Um, so you need to have a reproducible source of diamond. So this is the mine of my grandfather. It was 60 years ago. And this is our mine. It's a reactor in which we grow diamond. If we open this reactor, you see a key element in the center. It's the, the cube in which we grow the diamond. How do you do? Uh, we put a tiny piece of diamond we call a seed, which is the basis to grow the diamond. Then we evacuate the chamber in which we grow the diamond. So you, the chamber is empty and we put gases, um, usually it's methane. And we crack the molecules, methane molecules contain carbon, with a plasma. What happens is that the carbon atoms are released and they go on the surface of the seed. And in that way, layer by layer, the diamond is grown. And the diamond we grow is ultra-pure, at least 50 times more pure than the diamond you can find in nature. And thanks to that, you can address all the technological applications. I insist on that because uh, we also address jewelry applications. But if you only focus on jewelry applications, you're missing 90% of the market. Since we are located in Switzerland, the low-hanging fruit was the watch industry. A particular feature of diamonds is that when you put two diamond surfaces in contact, they slide almost perfectly onto each other. So it's, you have a mechanism which is frictionless. You don't need any uh, lubricant, you see, so no service on your watch. When you combine the hardness and the elasticity, you can make the best springs you can have. So diamond springs are the most efficient springs you, you can have. And this is really counterintuitive. So we have a partnership with a watch manufacturer, and now we're uh, making those parts uh, to make a, a watch uh, only with diamond parts. The second application we're developing in the company uh, is related to energy transfer. When you put diamond in lasers, you increase dramatically the power of lasers because diamond is the best conductor of heat. So um, the heat which is co-produced with the light is evacuated from the, the laser and therefore you can increase um, way more the, the power emitted by the, the lasers. And uh, we have a world record for a particular class of uh, lasers, um, and um, 
the feature, particular feature of these lasers is that the, the beam they emit is very straight, you see. So this is how we figured out that uh, a key application could be energy transfer. The energy we're talking about is uh, transferred via light, you see. So eventually, if you transfer energy to uh, drones, you don't need any batteries anymore. So the drones can fly forever. Uh, the, the flight is only limited by the, the lifetime of the, the uh, uh, motors. See? So you, you gain a lot in, a, in autonomy. Another application we have for energy transfer is developed thanks to a partnership uh, we have with uh, TACA, uh, which is a major energy producer in the uh, Middle East. And I have a, an animation to illustrate this. Um, it's from fixed point to another fixed point on the, on the Earth. It, and it's really to replace the, the wires, you see. And the challenge here is to equip countries uh, where um, the uh, electricity is scarce. Typically in Africa. In Africa, the problem is that the cost of uh, new infrastructure is uh, extremely high. We're talking about $2 million uh, per kilometer. And um, thanks to our solution, we simplify dramatically the infrastructure to transfer energy from uh, where it's produced to where uh, it's consumed. And you see here that by replacing wires um, with lasers, you also gain in flexibility. So the uh, network is way more agile. Another feature uh, this system allows is um, to distribute in multiple point points. And um, I think the, the major advantage is really uh, when you have a, a mountain or uh, anything that is really hard to, uh, to cross, um, it's way simpler with our system. And the last part, which was the first, uh, is when you can feed um, vehicles, flying objects, for instance. So this is the second application. The next application is related to power electronics. As I said earlier, diamond is the best material to make transistors because it's the material that holds uh, the highest voltage. Now, if you compare what can hold diamond with respect to what can hold silicon, um, just as an example here, um, a device needs to hold 10,000 volts, 10 kilovolts. Um, you need one millimeter of silicon, where you only need 20 micron of diamond. If you do it the other way, you only need two millimeters of diamond to hold one million volts, you see. So this is uh, linear, but uh, if you consider the same thing in the volume, uh, it's a reduction of uh, a hundred uh, thousand fold in volume, you see. So this will have uh, dramatic applications, uh, especially for uh, battery charging. Um, and it's, uh, of course, a growing market. Now, the last application is probably your favorite. Uh, it's more futuristic, but we're we already investing uh, in this application. It's related to quantum sensing. So let me dwell on this, um, because I did my PhD in, uh, in quantum physics. Um, as I said, diamond is made of carbon. If you replace some carbon atoms with nitrogen atoms, and you create a vacancy, so you remove a carbon atom next to it, you have a, a complex on which electrons are trapped. And you can use the spin of these electrons to sense extremely weak magnetic fields, very weak magnetic fields, 
such as the ones uh, emitted by the brain or the heart uh, when in function. We already have devices, uh, for instance, in cardiomagnetometry, you have huge systems uh, that allow to, to uh, uh, monitor um, the, the heart. But the problem is that those systems operate at cryogenic temperatures. What is cryogenic? It's minus 270 degrees Celsius. Thanks to diamond, you can have almost the same sensitivities, but at room temperature. So you dramatically simplify uh, the operation of the system, and you dramatically reduce the costs. So um, this uh, application is, uh, is really key for the future. Um, of course, as I said, we're at the beginning. Uh, we're performing research on, on this topic, and we think that the uh, first products uh, on the market uh, will be there in uh, five years from now. So to fund all this project, um, which is, um, say, very disruptive, we found a disruptive way as well to, uh, to, to, to finance uh, our growth. Um, we're emitting a token, um, and this token represents one minute of production in our machines. So one minute of production in our machines means uh, a piece of diamond. And you can use this token for any of the applications uh, I mentioned earlier. Right? So of course, the diamond that you need to grow to make a micro-mechanical part for the watch industry is less elaborate than uh, the diamond you use in laser, which has to be more pure, um, which is itself less uh, complex to grow than the diamond for transistors, um, because you need to, to dope it to make it conductive and so on. Um, and of course, uh, this one is uh, less elaborate than the, the last application, uh, where you need a, an ultra-pure diamond uh, doped with uh, nitrogen in certain places. So you see that um, the diamond uh, has a value that increases with the application. Hence, uh, the token uh, could increase um, when we address the, the, the applications uh, I was mentioning. Um, and the token uh, price will increase as well as we improve the productivity. So the token has <coughs> certain properties. Um, such that you can use directly the token to grow diamond in our machine and retrieve the diamond. You can capture our industrial opportunities, so it's a way to capture part of our, our turnover. Uh, or you can trade as well uh, when it's listed in exchange the, the tokens. And um, so far, the uh, operations have been quite, quite successful. We already uh, raised a, a few millions, thanks to that, and it's ongoing. Uh, and we think that it's a model that can be replicated to other companies like us, com company growing. Um, and the key is really to um, have a value related to time, in our case. And now I have to acknowledge uh, the PFL, so it's uh, Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne in Switzerland, um, with uh, which we are collaborating ex extensively. Uh, we have five different collaborations, uh, one per application. And um, now I guess you can have many questions, but uh, since I'm not allowed to take questions, uh, feel free to, uh, to meet me. Uh, uh, I'll be around, and I, I will have samples as well uh, to show. This is it. Thank you a lot. <laughs> Thank you.